need for longing. I let go of sexual interest. I become like Buddha and want nothing. Do these affirmations sound right to you? They sound off to me. And it's not as though I've actually successfully acted any of them out. Because when sexual attraction sets in, the Zen in your nature flies out the window. You meet someone, sometimes they're really terrific, other times they're just awful, but you find yourself attracted to them anyway, knowing you're a fool and you'll probably regret it later on. But then the pursuit begins. All those initial weeks of, of interested conversation, eyes more lively than usual, each party finding the other's comments and insights more than usually delightful and charming. And then if you've been in therapy like me, there are the flirtatious exchanges of childhood traumas. All of my family were borderline schizophrenic. They beat me. They had terrible taste in furniture. And then, your mind begins to reverberate with, when will I have an orgasm with this person? Now, if there's a God, his design about sex is, is certainly humiliating. You know, It's humiliating to want things. And sex, people say, is, is beautiful. What is it? I don't think it is. Maybe you do. Terrible eruptions of viscous discharges may strike you as the equivalent of the Sistine Chapel, for all I know. But it doesn't strike me that way. I know. I'm being negative again. And sex isn't just disgusting. You know that, I know that. Whenever I'm lucky enough to go out with someone, I certainly anticipate a pleasant time. Personally, I find women attractive. But uh, it's clear that some men have, have, uh, have been attractive, which I'm uh, a little embarrassed to bring up publicly, though. I, I don't know why I, I am bringing it up. And I, I don't know, why not? You know, I took some value before I came out here, but it's not calming me down a bit. <laughs> anyway, I didn't mean to get into this. It's just that so much of the evil that men do has at its core the inability of people to empathize with the position of another person. Say, when you're seven years old, you find yourself slightly more drawn to Johnny than you are to Jane. It's not a conscious decision, it, it just happens. It's, it's instinctive, like liking the color blue. Now, I can understand and accept that. But in less tolerant times, you could be put to death for this attraction. And as time went by, the, the punishment was reduced to, to mere castration or, or just imprisonment. Up until recently, this attraction was considered so horrific that society expected you to lie to yourself about your sexual and emotional feelings. And if you couldn't do that, then to at least shut up about it and and go off and live your life all bottled up and terrified, and, and if you'd be so kind as to, as to never have any physical contact with anyone ever, then you could be buried knowing that society felt you'd handle your disgraceful situation with tact and willpower. That was one cheery option. Nothing, and then the grave. Or you could make a false marriage with some woman who wouldn't know what was going on with you, and and both of your lives would be miserable and unfulfilled. That was another respectable option. Or you could kill yourself. Now, there's not a lot of empathy evident in anyone who would choose any of these positions. I mean, I mean, certainly, we know that it would be insane to ask a heterosexual to deny his or her natural sexual feelings 
and perform homosexual acts that go against their nature. Now, if we can have this empathy, why can't we have that same empathy but in reverse? I want some empathy here. I am the predominant source of... <coughs> well, fuck that. <laughs> and then there are the religious teachings about homosexuality. The book of Leviticus, for example, teaches us that homosexuals should basically be put to death. It also teaches us how to sacrifice rams and bullocks and instructs us not to sit in a chair sat in by a woman who's had her period in the last seven days or so. It's not a book I'd look to for much modern wisdom. And people's concepts of, of God are so odd. For instance, take the Christians. Take them, please. <laughs> who seem to think that God is so disgusted by the sexual activities of homosexuals that he created AIDS to punish them. Apparently he waited until 1978 or so, even though sexual acts of this nature have been going on for considerably longer than that, since at least uh, 1956. <laughs> I mean, what do these people think? That God sits around in a lounge chair, chatting with Gabriel, planning the fall foliage of the Gatineaus, Oh, I think a lot of orange this year. And suddenly he says, Boy, oh boy, do I hate homosexuals. I find them disgusting. I think I'm going to give them a really horrible disease. And Gabriel says, Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, and, and, and drug addicts and hemophiliacs. But why hemophiliacs? Uh, no reason. Uh, it's just that I want this this disease to affect the bloodstream, and, and even though I'm all-powerful and I can do everything, because I'm God, I'm too tired today to figure out a way to have this disease affect the bloodstream and not have it affect hemophiliacs. Um, Besides, the suffering will do them good. Oh, really? How? I don't know. I'll, uh, I'll explain it at the end of the world. But what about the children of drug addicts? Will babies get this disease through their mother's womb? Well, I hadn't thought of that. Uh, well, why not? They'll serve those hophead mothers right. Boy, oh boy, do I hate women drug addicts. Yes, but why punish their babies? And I hate homosexuals. Yes, we got that you hate homosexuals. Except an old coward. He was droll. <laughs> yes, he was droll. And I, and I, I hate Homosexuals! Yes, we, we got that already. But why punish women drug addicts' babies? Look, homosexuals and drug addicts are very, very bad people. And if babies get it, well, let's not forget it. I'm God. And you better just presume I've got some secret reason why it's good that they get it too. Yes, but what is this secret reason? Well, stop asking so many questions. Yes, but, look, there you go again, trying to hoard in on the tree of knowledge. Boy, oh boy, does that make me wrathful. Okay, Gabriel, you ask for it. I hereby sentence you to become a man. I give you suffering and death. I give you psychological pain. I give you AIDS. Your immune system will totally shut down. You'll die from brain tumors and diarrhea and horrible random infections. I give you bone cancer and, and lymph cancer and breast cancer and lots of cancer. Ah, and I hereby revoke penicillin. Anyone out there who's ever been exposed to syphilis will suffer and die just like they used to. There's a side issue. Boy, I love to connect sex and death. I don't know why I ever invented sex to begin with. It's a revolting idea. But as long as I have, I want it done properly. With one partner in the missionary position for life. And I want anyone who disobeys me to suffer and die a horrible death from, from AIDS or syphilis or God knows what else. Is that clear?
Now, surely this God couldn't exist. Surely the Christ who said, blessed are the merciful, could never have come from such a raging, spiteful God. What is that?